Right, got another new project T4 here, and as you can see, it's, it's right look. It's a what they call a Doka, short for Doppelkabine, which is German for double cab. Uh, so, some people say Doka, some people say Docker, but either way, it's the same thing. It's a crew cab pickup T4. This is a long wheelbase. Um, it's also synchro, but it's got the rear diff missing at the minute because the guy I bought it off said the rear diff mounting that's back here is uh, a bit rusty and not up to the job so I removed the diff and the prop and if you look at the gearbox you can see obviously transfer case and then there's the output for the prop shaft you can't really tell from this angle but that's the flange for the prop shaft to attach to and then it runs straight through here obviously there's a cut out in the tank for it and then there's also a mounting point there for the centre prop bearing. And then this is the rear diff mounting I was on about. If I just show you the floor, this is everything that I've knocked off it. It needs a lot of welding work. But to start with, I'm going to be just seeing what's what. Obviously, I've gone and gone round it and put any holes in thin metal like that. The most of it, like in the structural areas, it's actually all right, and the bottom of the cab's all right. It's just the inner and outer sills, the front inner arches, and the front wings mostly. So yeah, some people will say that's a lot of work, and it is, but it'll also be worth it. And when I jacked it up, the jacking point collapsed because it's that rusty. So like I say inner arches, the actual chassis all the way back till about, well, till here is solid, so all under the cab is solid, um, it's got a custom exhaust that somebody's made, and then, like I say, it's solid, there's a big hole somewhere over here, or there I think, yeah, you can see the light coming through it there, so from just behind the cab backwards is where all the rusty parts is on the chassis but I don't think it'll take too much to fix the chassis up these are the only other issues in terms of rust but I'm going to start by taking the wheels off all round uh, and this is a 1994 so it's the older style T4 uh, and this one as you can see is a short nose rather than a long nose like the other one Suspension and steering, everything is fine. Uh, it runs perfect. It's got a bit of a, an oil leak here. It's all it's it's an old oil leak by the look of it. This looks more wet. So obviously it's you know it's an old T4. It's going to have some oil leaks. It has been turboed. Uh, it's got the 2.5 turbo manifold and everything on. Uh, but it's missing a boost hose which I need to put on it. I think it has been remapped as well because if you put your foot down Obviously, there's no boost going in so it just uh, chucks out a load of black smoke So it must have already been mapped to the turbo Because it's a it's a 2.4 Naturally aspirated diesel that somebody's turboed with the 2.5 parts. So it's still a fire cylinder as you can see it was blue before and somebody's painted it in this like matte greeny grey colour. And then I found um, some old pictures of it from like 2017, I think. And it was it was still this colour, but it wasn't it wasn't rat look. All this is rusty paint, as they call it. Uh, obviously, underneath is actual rust, but this is all just paint. I'm gonna get on with doing the brakes first. Just to see if they'll free off, because this one's seized and the opposite corner's seized. But the front left and the rear right is alright. So I'm still going to strip them down just to make sure everything's right. And uh, not overly worn. I mean, these discs could probably do with being replaced anyway, just because of the pitting and the big step on it. But there's quite a bit of life left in the pads. Not like my camera's going to show you, but... Yeah, so I'm going to strip down the brakes first, make sure everything's right on all four corners, because that'll be half the battle. Then I'm going to go around and check all the brake lines, like you can see here, that it's all flaky on this, on this uh, joint here. 
and it's already had replacement brake lines by the look of it because it's been replaced with copper ones that's why they're oxidising going green but like all the brackets and everything are just crumbling so they'll all need replacing and then like that's the that's the carpet inside that you can see so I'll have to pull the carpet up inside and go around it all make sure nothing's going to catch on fire when I replace all these parts uh, the inside is pretty decent it's got I think it's well somebody's put roof bars on it you can't see them from here but somebody's put roof bars on and they aren't sealed right so I think the left side leaks uh, so the rear seat's wet so let's get on with the brakes so I've already taken the two 13mm out of the slider pins and now I'm going to pry the caliper hopefully it comes off Now I'm hoping it's not the caliper that's seized and it's just the slider pins that are making it uh, bind. I want to take these pads out and just lubricate them because I think that might be half of the battle. When I mean, you could see how seized in that was, I think I might have to clean up the sides as well because there's rust all like built up on these faces here I've chipped it as well when it landed on the floor yeah I think that might be what was holding the disc because it spins now whereas even when I had the caliper it still won't spin I think it might have just been the pads that were stuck so I'll go clean these up and then I'll put them back in. Well, I'll clean this up as well actually and uh, sort the slider pins. It's going to be a little bit noisy because compressors on it background but I'm going to use a die grinder with a wire wheel on the end just to clean up these surfaces. I'm just going to use a, screw, a flattened screwdriver to Try to scratch out any rust in this corner. Yeah, these slider pins are solid. So I think it was sort of a mixture between the slider pins and the brake pads being stuck that were binding this wheel up. Right, so you can see they're all dry on the top half. Bottom half still got grease on it. That one wasn't as tight as I thought it were. 
as soon as I put the spanner on it, it started moving. That one wasn't so much. So I'm going to clean these up on the bench grinder with a wire wheel and then I'll come to put them back in. I'm going to have to order some new rubber boots for them but I'll just put those on off camera. Right, so I've just finished cleaning up the slider pins. Obviously no rust left on them now. Um, and they are actually 17s, these slider pins. And obviously the bolts are 13s. So I'm going to put it all back together now with uh, lubrication in various places. Uh, this little boot that snapped earlier, I'm just going to reuse that for the time being until new ones arrive, just because it'll help keep a little bit of grime out. So for the slider pins, I'm just going to be using multi-purpose grace, normal grace. Nice liberal coating of it. I want to try and put some on the end as well so I can get it down inside the carrier. And then for these surfaces here, I'm just going to put some copper grease on them. Be careful not to touch the disc, obviously. And then I'll put uh, copper grease on the backs of the pads as well, so they don't stick to the caliper. So now those are in place, we'll put the caliper back in place and then bolt it in. Ah, oh, that worked. That disc way easier to turn. Yeah, basically no effort now. So that's one brake fixed. I'm going to do the other side off camera because obviously it's exactly the same. And then we'll go on to the back ones which are drum brakes. Right, so I'm to doing the rear brakes now. Uh, it's not this side that's binding but I'm going to take both of them apart and clean them all up and then reassemble them. So to start off we've got a 5mm I think. 5mm Allen screw, that one's a little bit rounded. Oh no, it's a 6 A 6mm Allen. So, oh, luckily, that one was already loose. But you can see how chewed up the head is. make sure everything's operating as it should be. Might give them a quick wire wheel where it's all flaky on the back plate and then blast it out with air and then I'll go to the other side that's actually seized. So this one's just going to be a, a quick clean up. That looks clean enough for me so I'm just going to put some copper grease on this face here and then I'll put the drum back on. I'll make sure the inside of the drum is cleaned out as well. So back on with the drum now. And this hole here, obviously it's bigger than the other three that are in, in the middle of the bolt holes. So where there's three big holes in a row, the middle one needs to go on that dowel there. Fairly self-explanatory. On the rear left now, and this is one that was quite badly seized. As you can see, it's still you can still turn it, just not very easily. I think we might have to get a new fitting kit for that because these retaining caps has just pulled the pin straight through it. So have to see if I can flatten it out a bit maybe and uh, just make it do for now until I can get some new retaining caps. Or I'll get a whole new fitting kit and redo the brakes. Alright, same again. Line that middle hole up with the dowel. Right, 
Right, so that's all the brakes done now, so I'm going to lower it, lower it down, torque all the wheel bolts up all the way around, and then I'll press the brake pedal nice and gently just to pump out the shoes and the calipers again. Otherwise, I'll have no brakes when I start driving. I'll just give you a quick peek inside. You can see there's no door here behind the driver. I think they, they do have twin door models, but because this is a right-hand drive, there's no right-hand door. There's only a left door, and it's a bench seat in the back, rather than individual seats. And then, that's the rear diff that I was on about, with the viscous coupling on it. And then, this is the double bench seat I'm going to be swapping out for a single, just a single seat over there. So then it's the same as my Caravelle. Now, as I was saying, I'm going to press the pedal. I don't want to push it all the way down. I'm just going to do it, pump it half at a time sort of thing. Until it gets hard. I think that's about there now. I might be a bit over cautious, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. So now we'll test out the brakes, make sure they're working as they should. Now we're already doing better than we were because we're actually rolling now when I dip the clutch. Whereas before it had just grind to a halt. So they're still not the best in terms of um, how far you have to press the pedal, but I think that's down to being old and uh, it probably needs some fresh brake fluid, which I don't know if I'll tag that onto this video or do that with the service. Um, it also needs front disc and pads, ideally. Uh, one of the one of the front pads, um, the actual pad material came away from the backing plate off camera. Um, so I've just put it back in in situ because I'm not going to be using this vehicle on the road or anything. So it's just going to be moving around from one spot to another. So I don't think it'd be too bad. And there's the old school clocks. Mind you, my Caravelle's got the same uh, face lit clocks as well. So anyway, if there's any more videos you'd like to see on the Doka, as I call it, then let me know. Obviously the Caravelle is still going to be on the channel because that's my daily driver. So yeah, if there's no else you want to see, or if you just want to see more videos doing work on this, then let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.